first and foremost, you need to go ahead and download Anki. Anki is free. It's available online. Go ahead and click the link in the description below to download it if you haven't already. Once you have it downloaded and you open it up, you should see a screen like this. If you don't, you didn't download it properly, in which case maybe you can troubleshoot. But if we once you have it downloaded, I want to now take you through the three things I'm going to talk about in this talk. The first thing is I'm going to show you how to make a deck in Anki, and I'm going to show you how to make an organized deck at that. I'm going to show you how that organization will help you with certain lectures. How do you make sure you organize your notes efficiently? And lastly, I'm going to go over how to make good flashcards in Anki. I only use one type of flashcard, sometimes one or two based on my add-ons, but I'm going to show you the main type of flashcard I use. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up a lecture and I'm going to just kind of annotate that briefly and show you how I do it. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to teach you how to do is we're going to make a deck. So create a deck. The way I always make my decks is I always create a general overall category. So right now we're doing neurology in my school. So go ahead and write neurology. Then I like to separate things chronologically. So week one lectures. Um, so let's say we just started neurology and it's our week one of lectures. I can just create the sub deck under neurology that says week one lectures. And if you take that week one and just put it under neurology, it'll automatically make it into a subset of neurology. So for example, now watch, let's say it's week two and I'm making notes about week two lectures. Um, and I want it to be under neurology, I just drag it under neurology and it's under week two neurology. So these two columns here actually show you the number of cards that you have due and the number of cards that are new. When you create flashcards, they will be put in this new column. So let's say today is week two and I just create 50 new flashcards. Here it, you'd see the number 50, or I mean here you'd see the number 50. But this column is the cards that are due. So these are cards that you made before that you are now seeing again on a regular basis. Again, as I said, the space repetition algorithm will put those cards up. And when you see those cards, you'll just do them again, and that'll just tell you how many cards you have due. So due and new cards are mutually exclusive. There's no overlap. They're basically just there to tell you how many new cards you have today and how many old cards you have that you have to review. Okay, so now, with that being said, I'm gonna now show you how I actually make flashcards. If you wanna add flashcards, you wanna click this button at the top that says add. When you click add, I wanna make sure you all are in this thing called close. So t I think you could have basic, Basic flashcards allow you to have a front and then back. So in this basic flashcard, you can say, what is the powerhouse of the cell? And the answer would be mitochondria. Some people definitely can make flashcards like this. I don't prefer it, and I will show you why. So let me go ahead and go to close instead. Close is my favorite. So with closed deletions, I want to show you how we can make amazing flashcards and be organized. So before we do that, I want to actually walk you through how I actually physically take notes when I'm watching a lecture. Um, so when I'm watching a lecture, I like to keep this on the side. So now I want to actually say, so I usually have it on the side here, and then usually I pull up my lecture. So when I have the lecture, I have them side by side. And then let's say I'm looking at the lecture and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. Um, I'm seeing that A alpha fibers are linked with proprioception. So the way I make my flashcards is, is I always make them in a question and answer format. Are A alpha fibers used to convey in the spinal cord? And then I'll say proprioception. So the whole point of closed deletions is you can now press command shift C and it turns it into a close. So now what it, what it ends up happening is when I see this flashcard, it'll initially show me what are A alpha fibers and the answer will be proprioception. And then you click add. So now let's go back and I will show you what this looks like. So if we go to our decks and go to week two lectures, notice how now it has one in the column because there I just added one new card to week two. And specifically, if I go to study that card, it'll ask me what are A alpha fibers used to convey and that thing that I closed off was proprioception. And now let's say I know this. Let's say I don't know this at all. If I press again, it'll show me this card again in less than a minute. If I press good, it'll show me this card in less than 10 minutes. If I press easy, like I really knew this card, then it'll show me this card in four days. So in four days, if I pressed easy, this card would show up in my due pile. Point is that's one way I make my flashcards. Um, and now let's see, I can kind of keep going, right? Um, another way I can do that is what are a beta fibers used for? And in this case, beta fibers are used for mechanoreceptors um, of for the skin. So now let's say I'm looking at this again and I'm looking at the A beta one and I'm like, hmm, oh wow, A beta fibers are found with the mechanoreceptors of the skin. So I can also say what kind of fibers do 
the piano receptors of the skin have? And just to be specific, I can say what kind of axonal fibers I can, I'm specifying here. Um, and then the answer here would be A beta. Okay, and then I would press Command, Shift, C, and I could get another closed deletion, and that's that. So these are really the way I make my flashcards. I always make them in a question and answer format, and I always like to make them in like a very short, succinct answer. But let's say I, in med school, you're gonna have a hundred plus lectures. You're gonna have so many lectures where like you might be like, "What the hell is an A beta fiber? I don't remember at all." So now here's a really cool thing. In your Mac, you can press Control Shift Four, and it allows you to take a screenshot. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. And when I take a screenshot of this, I can now take this picture and paste it as a note. So this extra column in closed deletions is what I really like because when I actually see the answer now, it can give me the screenshot of a note that helps me contextualize in my mind, oh, A beta fibers, oh, this is the slide that I came from, oh, A beta fibers in terms of the axons that mechanoceptors are linked with in the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, I get that. They're pretty fast. So now, now let me show you what happens. Now when I go back, to Anki. Now when I go back to Anki, I have two new flashcards, first of all. The first one is what are the A alpha fibers used to convey? I say proprioception. I already knew that. That's easy. I don't want to see the card again. But now what kind of fibers do the mechanoceptors of the skin have? Axonal fibers. And now the answer is A beta. And you'll see that underneath A beta, I have this nice note where I can actually refer like, oh, okay, that's where that came from. That's cool. So now that you guys know how I prefer to make my flashcards, here is what I do not recommend. And again, I learned this from experience because I used to do this a lot. Um, so let's just say I'm trying to make flashcards and I want to know more about the vermis of the cerebellum. It's basically the central part of the cerebellum. And I go to Wikipedia and I'm like, wow, look at all this great information. There's so much stuff here that I need to know. And I just copy and paste all of Wikipedia here. And then what I used to do is I used to like just close delete a lot of these. I used to close delete like the cerebellum vermis and I used to make a close deletion here. And then I used to make a close deletion here. And I used to make another one like here. And I used to just close delete a lot of things and a big chunk of text thinking like, oh, this is so great. I can make a bunch of flashcards with this. This way does not work. This is not a good way to learn because it's so hard to follow along and just try to fill in blank words. It's much easier to come up with a question, make one very short answer, and then answer it with a closed deletion. And that makes life so much easier than trying to just make a bunch of closed deletions based on like a copying and pasting of a text. So I strongly discourage against something like this. So when you do this now, when you do this, let me show you what ends up happening. When you do this, you'll see we added four new cards and they're all from the same place. The first one is gonna be like the cerebellar blank is located in this part, so it's the vermis. But the point is now it's gonna show me the second one. Now it's that. And people do this a lot thinking that it could help. It really does not help at all. It makes it really confusing. It makes a lot more cards than you need. In general, just do not make cards like this. You need to make cards where you have a question and an answer. Do not make cards where you just have a sentence and you're expected to memorize that. That's not like how the human brain works. The human brain works by asking questions and finding answers. If you're just memorizing sentences, that's all you're going to be doing, memorizing sentences. And when it comes test time and it asks a question, you're not going to be able to recite the answer because you just memorize sentences. So do not, do not, do not do this. Do not do it this way. All right. Well, so that kind of sums up how I make my flashcards, what good flashcard looks like and what bad flashcard looks like. I want to just put this all together by showing you guys my real Anki. This is not my real Anki. I downloaded it and made it blank here. I want to show you my real Anki. Two notes. You're going to see a lot of things on my Anki that are new. There's differences because I have a bunch of add-ons. There's a lot of decks. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by any of that. Just follow along. I also won't have my face on there because it's a lot more on the screen. So I just want to make sure you guys can see and they'll embrace all of it. So just follow the mouse along. But I'm going to just show you um, what I just went over in action um, because I have a lot of stuff in there that I think will help. So let's do that. Now. Okay, so welcome to my official Anki. As you can see here, there's a lot of stuff. So before we even start, I'm sure you guys are going to look at this and get overwhelmed because this is an add-on that I've added on that you don't have. And I will talk a bit about this add-on later on. It just helps me keep track of my progress, but it also kind of will show you just how intensely I do Anki. So yesterday I did a thousand reviews. The day before that I did 984, the day before that I did 845, the day before that I did 1084, 36, 952. So you see there's a lot of things here that help me keep track of my progress and I clearly have been doing this a lot. So at least uh, you guys know that I have learned a lot from this. And um, by no means do I do all of these every day. I only do two main decks. I do this main master deck, which has, I think, around 3,000 flashcards in it. 
Um, and then I do this one, which is my current course, which I think has at least 1,800 flashcards in it. Um, so again, as a, let me just show you the organization here again. I, I break it down by week. So you'll see in week one, I have all my lectures from week one. And then I had, we had one lab in week one, so I had a lab uh, flashcard. Um, week two, very similar. I had a lab and then I had lectures and I made subcategories for each of these. Now this really facilitates the organization and it really helps me when I want to go back and review certain things about these that I can just go to a specific place and be like, okay, this is probably where it is. With all of that being said, um, you can now also see that in this deck I have to review 382 cards today. Um, and the reason for that is because I have just stuff that's built up over time. And so I'm going to do that by the end of today. Great. So now that I've gone over the organization, you know how all of this is. Now I want to actually go through and show you some of the flashcards I see here. So here's this. So where in the circle of Willis are aneurysms most common? I know the answer here is actually between the anterior communicating artery um, and the anterior um, cerebral artery. So in between the anterior communicating artery and the anterior... Okay, look at that. See, it works. And this was the last time I saw this was a while ago. Um, and so... In this case, you'll see how I have my note here, and you'll see how here, I've done this flashcard so many times that if I didn't know it at all, I would press again, and I would see it again in 10 minutes, but I'm not going to press that. If I if I thought it was hard, if I pressed here, it, show, it shows me again in 13 days. If I press good, it shows me again in 27 days, and if I press easy, it shows me again in 1.2 months. Because I knew this, I'm going to put good. Similarly, MS, is that a disease of the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system? Multiple sclerosis is actually a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. So here you'll see central nervous system and it affects oligodendrocytes. So I make these notes to myself. And again, I know this, I'm going to press good. Here it says the hindbrain matures into the blank and the myelencephalon. So the hindbrain is also, also known as, I believe, the... Um, Let's see, rhombencephalon, which matures into the metencephalon, the myelencephalon, and the metencephalon is what I think goes here. Yeah, so again, you'll see here, and I have the image. So again, look at all these things at the bottom. These numbers are different because I've been doing this for such a long time. Um, and you'll also notice I have this progress bar at the top. These are all add-ons that I've added on. I'll talk a bit about those later on. But the whole point is you'll see that now... My reviews went down from what I started on because I just went through three cards. I have to get through all of these tomorrow. Ideally, in Anki, you want to get through all of your reviews during the day because that is the best way to provide long-term retention. It takes a lot of time. I do a lot of Anki. I do at least three, four hours of Anki a day. But I try to get through all of my reviews every day, and every day I'll have more. So you'll see here, if you wanted to know how many reviews you'll have, click this button at the top right. And tomorrow... So this shows me tomorrow I'm going to have 187 cards to review. So after I get through my 324 to 378 today, tomorrow I'm going to have 124. But hopefully you guys found this helpful, um, and I will hopefully continue making more of these. If you like this, please give this um, video a, a like, a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, and subscribe. Bye-bye.